Your working documents will not always be in a single file format. So if you're unsure of which to stick with, a geopackage file or a shape file, then this video is going to explain to you the differences and advantages of each other over the other. And also I'll show you on I'll show you steps to convert a shape file to a geopackage file and a geopackage file to a shape file depending on which you prefer to work with all of this using QGIS. If you're in so much hurry and you are a subscriber to my channel, Special Data Hub, then click on the description. You will see the exact timings of each of these sections so that I can easily skip to which is of most interest to you. Otherwise, let's dig in. The shape file was prepared, was developed by ESRI in the early 1990s and it is used to store non-topological vector data while the geopackage file as defined by its developers OGC is an open source platform independent format used to store geospatial information the shape file is a multi-file format it's each of its vector files come with a package of six other extensions sometimes less you have the .cpg, prj, shp itself, shx, qmd, dbf all of this calls for more caution when you are sharing shape files or uh, changing the seeds directory you see it mostly with newbies you ask them to share a shape file for you and they just send the .shp file it doesn't work yeah while the um the geopackage file comes as a single file of its own. The shape files have a maximum size of 2 gig when exporting them. And you also notice that it gets sluggish on your software when it's already larger than 500 MB and around 1 gig. Everything starts lagging and but that's opposed to the way the geopackage file works. The geopackage file has no file size limit and it's super fast even when processing using PostgreSQL on the database and it's much better and much faster than the shape file. There can't be more than one geometry, geometry type on a single shape file. Well, a geopackage file can have multiple layers and multiple um, geometry types stored in them. In a shape file too, you notice that each column on the attributes table is limited to 10 characters. Yeah, so if you are the descriptive kind of person who likes to describe much more than that, then it limits what you can enter if that's the case. So now let's go into converting a geopackage file to a ship file using QGIS. All right, so on QGIS here, I have a blank page opened. You can easily add a ship, you can easily add a file by clicking on this data source manager and importing it as a vector file. It's pretty basic. Okay, let's try that. Just on the vector databases, then I have mine on my desktop so you navigate to the directory by clicking on this browse button here and select your file and add it remember select as a vector file if you're adding a raster file then it's different but a jpackage file registers as a vector file and you click on the add button and it easily adds you can also um, import it into QGIS by navigating through the browse panel. You can activate the browse panel by right clicking on the toolbar and tick on browse panel here. Then navigate through home and find the directory. Mine is on desktop and I see it here. BLD G package. So that's for that. To convert it to an S3 shape file, right click on it export save features 
and you select S3 shape file. You choose the directory which you want to save it. I'll still choose desktop. Let's call it spatial data hub and we'll save. You can set the coordinate reference system and every other details. You can decide to add it to the map where it is already the QGIS layout here. That's this add saved map file. And I click on OK. I'll now find it here. So it's exactly the same file, just different file formats which can be used for different other purposes. Now to convert to um a G package file from a shape file is same thing. This is a shape file, just the way you import this as a vector file, G package as a vector file. You import these two as a vector file. Right click on it, export, save feature as, and then you select G package. You can see that there are over a dozen other file formats which are supported on different other GIS platforms as you find necessary. You set up the other details and save your file. Thanks for watching. Always check the description of my videos for links to similar videos on my channel which I update. I always update my descriptions as I update the videos on my channel. This would be a very good time to subscribe to my channel if you haven't. I'll see you in the next video.